Okay, on today's Bass Motorsports, it's another beautiful day in South Carolina here. Um, but at the same time, it's probably 85 degrees out here, so it's a little warm. But anyway, we're going to get some stuff done today. This is the Maxim. It's the second video on the Maxim 2300SC. Um, what I'm going to go ahead and do today is in the engine bay again. Today, we're going to start cleaning everything out. As you can see in the first video, I pulled the engine out. Now today, we're going to work on this trim pump over here. I need to check it out, jump it, make sure it's all right. Just going to hook up to this battery here and uh, test it. Change the bracket as long as that's all it needs, like I'm hoping. And back here, we're going to get a couple things out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and pull this alternator and power steering because uh, the alternator itself is pretty trash looking. I don't like all the rust on it and all the corrosion, so I've got a nice one in there on the other motor. I'll just drop it in here. But uh, I think I'm going to hold off on doing a transom seal because I really have no reason to believe anything was leaking. I just was going to do it while I was that close, but uh, it still needs, it can eat up some time pretty quick, so I'm not going to do that right now. Um, but I do have the exhaust flaps. We'll go ahead and put them in too. Let's get on. And what I'm doing now is all I had was this top post battery, and these are the marine style where they would need the studs, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, hook up the ground. Really all I need is, looks like this is going to be the one, the ground for the actual pump, and they have the hot wire running right up into the switch. I'll just have to flip it and see which one makes it hot for the pump there. Probably either one of them. All right, I hooked it up to the battery and just flipped the switch on. Oh, let's see if we got anything. Uh, she's a clicky. Ooh. Oh, she's a clicker. She's a clicker. So, it could be background because the way the chassis of that uh, holder, the pump holder is actually just rusted all the way through. Let's take a look and see. Uh, it, it, this solenoid could be bad also. And the main pump has two of these 916 bolts on the back. Let's set the phone down. And do those, then it is the pump is loose, but see, you still got your wires coming into solenoids. You don't want to pull them too tight. I got to break this ground point loose up here, which I don't think was an issue. Uh, you do have to hold the nut on the back with a wrench, and then these little three eights down through here for the solenoids zip those off all right so what I did was I just went ahead and I'm jumping the pump real quick to bypass all the solenoids make sure the pump itself isn't locked up now you do this at your own risk when you're working with batteries especially all I have is some jump I mean uh, vice grips to hold them but what I'm gonna do is I got my black to the negative got the blue which would be one direction I don't know if it's up or down but anyway just checking it well, it was working. Damn. I might say this motor is bad because a second ago it was working, but it sounded a little rough. I guess I'll be changing the whole pump out. Yeah, she's not sounding too hot. Whew. Yeah, that one's no, no good though. Next, I undid this main power cord off of here and went ahead and unplugged the connector and undid my other wire off the bottom of the solenoid here which they are color coded as you can see this wire is the green and this one's the blue to the solenoid so now we're free from this well now we are and we're going to trash this assembly and just stick a whole new well maybe not new but a whole another assembly now i still have to undo my lines here off the actual pump and I'll probably just snap a pick real quick to remember that the dark is on this side and the lighter is on this side so I don't get it mixed up on the in and out up and down so uh, let's go ahead and get that out and next step I'm gonna go ahead and pull these and do the flappers so I put my 9 16 on the inside fitting here and the 716 is out here on the little line, and I'm going to break these free, which you might do it like that. Nah, I need both hands. It broke free, but you get the idea. 
pumps out. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and take this whole cooling line out with the power steering pump and the cooler back here. I'm going to just undo this little rubber hose here. This is the return side. Undo the pressure side right here. The return is a little too rusty. I don't want to mess with it there. I'll just undo it here. And then undo the, like I said, the pressure side from this one. And then I can take this whole assembly out of the way. So here's one thing I wanted to mention because this is something you don't want to lose. These are just sitting on here. And they're like a spiral type washer, lock washer style. It's actually like a little cushion. It just gets everything when your bell housing sits on these and then big bolts go through and it has your coupler lined up perfectly back here, the alignment, because there is no alignment change back here. It's all done by the front motor mounts, you know, adjust up and down, left and right, or port and starboard. So go ahead and just grab these. Um, I'm going to try to leave the, let's see, sometimes, yeah, see, it's kind of stuck. This will just pick right up off of it, this felt washer type thing, and it's kind of holding these in place. They have a little bit of, like, stickiness to them right now, so I'm going to hope when I wash everything they don't just come loose, but I'm definitely not going to knock them loose right now. So I'm going to set these aside. Do not lose those. And, uh, just wanted to mention that. Oh yeah, and these are your bottom nuts. See, they're just sitting in slots. These will slide out. If you try to move this and haul it through the yard and you have to go down a hill or hit some bumps, it can fall out like this. And it's a special lock nut and it's very lightweight. I'm not sure what the material is, but something that won't rust. Uh, I guess it's an aluminum, but anyway, you just slide that right in there. Um, and it's slotted so it doesn't spin as you stick the top bolt through and thread it in, but like I said, it will very easily fall out of out of its spot with a little vibration or something. So uh, I'll even put a little bit of grease on them after I clean everything real good. I'll put some grease on them so they don't move anywhere and then have the washers sat back on. <laughs> See, that is one of the biggest things about when I do an engine swap, I love getting this stuff clean because I could take the screwdriver to all this and just bust it loose. It was dirt all just piled up in here so thick. And I just don't like it. I mean, there's just so much of it. So anyway, I definitely want to get out the bigger stuff. I've been getting out the acorns and stuff like that. So they don't cl clog up the little drains. And you always want your drains to be, see this one's got one from this stringer goes through and comes out into the engine bay there. I mean into the lower bilge but anyway uh, we're gonna get all this cleaned up so that's the first hit trying to clean it up and I'm gonna have to go down and clean that hole back out the drain hole let that drain out but uh tried cleaning it up some we'll hit it again after that drains so another little pointer to do on the trim on the power trim motor on these Merc cruisers is go ahead and pop this cap off the back right here this is the main stud on the pump what will happen is this thing does get loose and that's where a lot of times you'll get that click 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 on your solenoids because you're not really getting a good connection the uh, stud will just spin so you have to with the wire off tighten this nut while holding the back one under this cover right here then you can put your wire on with the lock nut, uh, washer and the nut on the outside to lock it down. Make sure when it's all said and done, you cannot wiggle the wire at all. If there's any movement that's no good, you will have problems. So this is another view with the block back on. What it does, it goes on the uh, screw, one of these screws here on the solenoid, and then there's a little <clears throat> bus bar between the two solenoids that feeds them with power stick the uh, boot back up on here. I'll have to probably use both hands for that, but the point is you do not want any movement right here on that wire. Now I do have the whole thing loose still because I just changed this pump I found that's good onto another bracket that's good and we're about to test these solenoids. So I need to get this just set up and plugged in and let me get it jumped over to the battery. 
All right, so I've got it all jumped again because I don't have the wiring in the boat yet as far as because the engine's not in plugged into the harness. So let's hit the switch. See? pump with the new solenoids. Let's hit the buttons. See what happens. Oh yeah. Up and down. Hell yeah. All right. So that takes care of that. Finally. And it pumps back in. Mounted down. Lines hooked up. Everything should be good there. I uh, just got to fill it up and get it all bled out. But we don't have the outdrive on yet and the cylinders anyway. So. Uh, all right, now I'm putting the end back on my cable here because I did my bellows out back on the transom. So what I want to do is imagine that the cable is coming up on top of the engine. This is the position it's going to be in. So as I screwed this in, the barrel is pinned to this that we're spinning. So what I want to do is see if I let it lock down right there. That's not very straight with, I'm going to leave it right there like that because then it's going to slide into the bracket I want it nice and parallel with the top of the motor so now I can lock down the nut right there and I'm going to lock that with a wrench real quick I'm about to put this end back on the cable now you got to be careful with this little thing it just slides right in and out it will fall into the bottom of the engine bay but as you can see there's a little hole there and we want to make sure that's lined up straight with the shaft here to where when we stick this over the cable, it's going to go inside this little barrel lock nut thing and then we can lock it down. Okay, I could feel that it, the cable went through that barrel at the end. So now what I'm going to do is again, imagine that it's on the motor in its resting position and that's where I'm going to tighten it because you could tighten this anywhere, but it might have a strain twisting the cable inside the housing and we don't want that so I get it lined up now I'm going to take a little adjustable and tighten these little squares on the end and I'm going to make sure my little double lock washer type of thing it's actually like a little spacer make sure those are in the washers here lined up luckily like I said my washers are still stuck and I don't want to touch them too much to make them fall off uh, this is just the lube drive, gear lube. That is not looking good. So I'm glad I did that because I need to replace this hose too. 